नमस्कार वॉम वेलकम टू वर्ल्ड न्यूज एंड इंडियन परस्पेक्टिव ऑन ऑल इंडिया रेडियो दिस इज सायरा मुश्तबा एंड विद मी इज रेणुका ब्रिंगिंग क्लिम्सेज ऑफ मेजर डिवेलपमेंट्स ऑफ द डे फ्रॉम अक्रॉस द ग्लोब ओवर द नेक्स्ट हाफ एन आवर वी शेल ब्रिंग यू द लेटेस्ट फ्रॉम द वर्ल्ड ऑफ पॉलिटिक्स इकोनॉमी स्पोर्ट्स एंटरटेनमेंट एंड मोर द हेडलाइंस India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi addresses fifth BIMSTEC summit virtually calls for making Bay of Bengal the bridge of connectivity prosperity and security External Affairs Minister Dr S Jayashankar holds meeting with Foreign Minister of Mexico Marcelo Ebrard Kosobo in New Delhi Imran Khan led Pakistan government reduced to minority as key ally Mutahida Qaumi movement Pakistan quits coalition Russia decides to cut down military operations near Ukrainian capital Kyiv but says it is not a ceasefire. UN World Food Program cautions crisis in Ukraine has created a catastrophe and will have a global impact. India test fires to medium range surface to air missile army weapon system of Odisha coast. And in IPL, Kolkata Knight Riders set a victory target of 129 runs before Royal Challengers Bangalore. at dy patel stadium in mumbai and now the news in detail india's prime minister narendra modi has given a clarion call to make the bay of bengal the bridge of connectivity prosperity and security and stressed that regional cooperation has become a greater priority in the present scenario attending the bimstech summit virtually on wednesday The Prime Minister said recent developments in Europe have raised questions about the stability of the international order. He said it has become important to make Bimstech regional cooperation more active. He pointed out that the region has not remained untouched by today's challenging global scenario. Mr Modi said a Bimstech charter is being adopted to develop an institutional architecture for the Bimstech group. This is the 25th year of the establishment of Bimstech. He said the outcome of this landmark summit will write a golden chapter in the history of Bimstech. The Prime Minister highlighted the importance of enhancing the capacity of the Secretariat for Bimstech to meet everyone's expectations. He suggested that a roadmap should be made to achieve this goal. He said India will provide financial assistance of 1 million dollars to increase the operational budget of the Secretariat. The Prime Minister said it is necessary to make early progress on the proposal of Bimstech free trade agreement to enhance trade. He said exchanges between entrepreneurs and startups of Bimstech countries should be increased. He further stated that international norms should be adopted in the field of trade facilitation. Talking about considerable progress being achieved in the Bimstech connectivity agenda, the Prime Minister said the adoption of the master plan for transport connectivity by leaders lays out a guidance framework for connectivity related activities in the region for the betterment of future mr modi along with other leaders also witnessed the signing of three bimstech agreements which represent progress being achieved in the ongoing cooperation activities after the summit in a tweet mr modi said he was happy to participate in the fifth bimstech summit hosted by sri lanka The Prime Minister said several important decisions were taken to further the Bimstech cooperation agenda. He commended the able leadership of Sri Lankan Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksha and extended his best wishes to the incoming Chair Prime Minister of Thailand Prayut Chan-o-cha. In today's hot spot section we bring you a discussion on Prime Minister Narendra Modi's address at Bimstech Summit 2022. The Bay of Bengal Initiative for Multi-Sectoral, Technical and Economic Cooperation or BIMSTEC is a regional organization that was established on 6th of June 1997 with the signing of the Bangkok Declaration initially known as BISTEC that is Bangladesh India Sri Lanka Thailand Economic Cooperation the organization is now known as BIMSTEC and comprises of seven member states with the admission of Myanmar on 22nd December 1997 and Bhutan and Nepal in February 2004 Bimstech's institutional evolution has been gradual following a decision at the third Bimstech summit in 2014 the Bimstech secretariat was established in Dhaka Bangladesh in that same year providing an institutionalized framework for deepening and enhancing cooperation being a sector driven grouping cooperation within Bimstech had initially focused on six sectors in 1997 that is trade technology energy transport tourism and fisheries and then expanded in 2008 to incorporate agriculture 
पब्लिक हेल्थ पॉवर्टी एलिविएशन काउंटर टेररिज्म इन्वायरमेंट कल्चर पीपल टू पीपल कॉन्टैक्ट एंड क्लाइमेट चेंज सब्सिक्वेंटली फॉलोइंग स्टेप्स टू रैशनलाइज एंड रीऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर्स एंड सब सेक्टर्स कोऑपरेशन वॉज रीऑर्गेनाइज इन टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी वन एंड इंडिया लेट द सिक्योरिटी सेक्टर विच इंक्लूड्स काउंटर टेररिज्म एंड ट्रांस नेशनल क्राइम डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट एंड एनर्जी द फिफ्थ बिम्स्टेक समिट टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू वॉज हेल्थ टूडे एट कोलम्बो श्रीलंका द समिट थीम टू वर्ड्स द रिजिलियंट रीजन प्रॉस्परस इकोनॉमीज हेल्थी पीपल कैप्चर्स द मेन करंट प्रायोरिटीज ऑफ मेंबर स्टेट्स एंड द एफर्ट्स ऑफ बिम्स्टेक टू डेवलप कोऑपरेशन एक्टिविटीज दैट सपोर्ट मेंबर स्टेट्स प्रोग्राम्स टू डील विद द इकोनॉमिक एंड डेवलपमेंट कॉन्सिक्वेंसिस ऑफ द कोविड नाइन्टीन पैंडमिक At the fourth BIMSTEC summit held in Nepal in August 2018, it was decided to task the BIMSTEC Secretariat to prepare a preliminary draft of the charter for the organization, building on the 1997 Bangkok Declaration, defining a long-term vision and priorities for cooperation. The main outcome of today's summit was the adoption and signing of the BIMSTEC Charter, which formalizes the grouping into an organization made up of member states that are literal to and dependent upon the Bay of Bengal. Attending the BIMSTEC summit virtually, Prime Minister Narendra Modi said recent developments in Europe have raised questions about the stability of the international order. He said, "It has become important to make BIMSTEC regional cooperation more active." He pointed out that the region has not remained untouched by today's challenging global scenario. He said, "The BIMSTEC charter is being adopted to develop institution architecture for the BIMSTEC group, and the outcome of this landmark summit will write a golden chapter in the history of BIMSTEC." बिम्स्टेक की स्थापना का ये 25वां वर्ष है इसलिए आज की समिट को मैं विशेष रूप से महत्वपूर्ण मानता हूं इस लैंडमार्क समिट के परिणाम बिम्स्टेक के इतिहास में एक स्वर्णिम अध्याय लिखेंगे आज हमारे बिम्स्टेक चार्टर को एडोप्ट किया जा रहा है एक संस्थागत आर्किटेक्चर की ओर हमारे प्रयासों के लिए एक महत्वपूर्ण कदम है इसके लिए मैं अध्यक्ष महोदय का आभार व्यक्त करता हूं चार्टर में हमने हर दो साल में समिट मीटिंग्स और सालाना विदेश मंत्रियों की बैठक का निर्णय लिया है मैं इसका स्वागत करता हूं अब हमें अपना ध्यान इस बात पर फोकस करना चाहिए कि इस आर्किटेक्चर को और मजबूत कैसे बनाया जाए इस संदर्भ में सेक्रेटरी जनरल का सुझाव है कि एक एमिनेंट पर्सन ग्रुप का गठन किया जाए जो एक विजन डॉक्यूमेंट तैयार करेगा मैं सुझाव से सहमत हूँ द प्राइम मिनिस्टर हाईलाइटेड द इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ इन्हांसिंग द कैपेसिटी ऑफ द सेक्रेटेरियट फॉर बिम्स्टेक टू मीट एवरी वन एक्सपेक्टेशन ही सजेस्टेड दैट अ रोड मैप शुड बी मेड टू अचीव द स्कोल ही सेड इंडिया विल प्रोवाइड फाइनेंशियल असिस्टेंस ऑफ वन मिलियन डॉलर टू इंक्रीज द ऑपरेशनल बजट ऑफ द सेक्रेटेरियट बिम्स्टेक हमारी अपेक्षाओं को पूरा करे इसके लिए सचिवालय की क्षमता को बढ़ाना भी महत्वपूर्ण है मेरा सुझाव है कि सेक्रेटरी जनरल पर इस लक्ष्य की प्राप्ति के लिए एक रोडमैप बनाए यह महत्वपूर्ण कार्य समय और अपेक्षा के अनुरूप पूरा हो इसके लिए भारत सचिवालय के ऑपरेशनल बजट को बढ़ाने के लिए वन मिलियन डॉलर की वित्तीय सहायता देगा द प्राइम मिनिस्टर सेड इट इज नेसेसरी टू मेक अर्ली प्रोग्रेस ऑन द प्रपोजल ऑफ बिम्स्टेक फ्री ट्रेड एग्रीमेंट to enhance trade he said exchanges between entrepreneurs and startups of bimstec countries should be increased he further stated that international norms should be adopted in the field of trade facilitation hamare aapasi vyapar ko badhane ke liye bimstec fta ke prastav par shigra pragati karna aavashyak hai hame apne desh ke udyamiyon aur startups ke beech aadan pradan bhi badhana chahiye isi ke sath hame trade facilitation ke क्षेत्र में इंटरनेशनल नॉर्म्स को अपनाने का भी प्रयत्न करना चाहिए इससे इंट्रा बिम्स्टेक ट्रेड और इकोनॉमिक इंटीग्रेशन को बढ़ावा मिलेगा इस संदर्भ में इंडियन काउंसिल फॉर रिसर्च ऑन इंटरनेशनल इकोनॉमिक रिलेशंस एडीबी के साथ मिलकर हमारे अधिकारियों की जागरूकता बढ़ाने के लिए एक कार्यक्रम शुरू करने वाला है मैं आशा करता हूं कि सभी देश के संबंधित अधिकारी इसमें नियमित रूप से शामिल होंगे टॉकिंग अबाउट कंसिडरेबल प्रोग्रेस बींग अचीव इन द बिम्स्टेक कनेक्टिविटी एजेंडा द प्राइम मिनिस्टर सेड द एडोप्शन ऑफ द मास्टर प्लान फॉर ट्रांसपोर्ट कनेक्टिविटी बाय लीडर्स लीज आउट अ गाइडेंस फ्रेमवर्क फॉर कनेक्टिविटी रिलेटेड एक्टिविटीज इन द रीजन इन द फ्यूचर हमारे बीच बेहतर इंटीग्रेशन 
बेहतर व्यापार बेहतर पीपल टू पीपल संबंधों का मुख्य आधार बेहतर कनेक्टिविटी है इस पर हम जितना भी जोर दें कम है आज हमने बिम्स्टेक के मास्टर प्लान फॉर ट्रांसपोर्ट कनेक्टिविटी को एडोप्ट किया है इसे तैयार करने के लिए मैं एडीबी का आभार व्यक्त करता हूं हमें इस मास्टर प्लान के शीघ्र इम्प्लीमेंटेशन पर जोर देना चाहिए इसी के साथ कनेक्टिविटी के क्षेत्र में पहले से चल रहे इनिशिएटिव पर भी हमें तेजी से आगे बढ़ना होगा बे ऑफ बंगाल में एक कोस्टल शिपिंग इकोसिस्टम स्थापित करने के लिए एक कानूनी फ्रेमवर्क शीघ्र विकसित करना आवश्यक है इलेक्ट्रिसिटी ग्रिड इंटर कनेक्टिविटी को भी चर्चाओं से आगे ले जाकर धरातल पर उतारने का समय आ गया है इसी तरह रोड कनेक्टिविटी बढ़ाने के लिए भी एक लीगल फ्रेमवर्क की स्थापना महत्वपूर्ण है द प्राइम मिनिस्टर सेड दैट बिम्स्टेक सेंटर फॉर वेदर एंड क्लाइमेट इज एन इम्पोर्टेंट इंस्टीट्यूशन फॉर डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट एंड इंडिया इज विलिंग टू कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट थ्री मिलियन डॉलर टू रिज्यूम इट्स वर्क हमारे क्षेत्र पर हमेशा से प्राकृतिक आपदाओं का खतरा रहा है डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट विशेषकर डिजास्टर रिस्क रिडक्शन पर सहयोग के लिए बिम्स्टेक सेंटर फॉर वेदर एंड क्लाइमेट एक महत्वपूर्ण संस्था है और इसे सक्रिय बनाने के लिए मैं आप सबका सहयोग चाहूंगा इस सेंटर के कार्य को पुनः शुरू करने के लिए भारत तीन मिलियन डॉलर का योगदान करने को तैयार है भारत ने हाल में तीसरी बिम्स्टेक डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट एक्सरसाइज पैन एक्स ट्वेंटी वन आयोजित की इस तरह की एक्सरसाइज नियमित रूप से होनी चाहिए ताकि हमारे अधिकारियों के बीच डिजास्टर के समय साथ काम करने की इंस्टीट्यूशनल व्यवस्था मजबूत हो मिस्टर मोदी सेड दैट इंडिया इज ऑल्सो वर्किंग ऑन एक्सटेंडिंग एंड एक्सपैंडिंग द स्कॉलरशिप प्रोग्राम ऑफर्ड बाय द नालंदा इंटरनेशनल यूनिवर्सिटी क्वालिटी एजुकेशन संबंधित सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट गोल को प्राप्त करना हम सभी की राष्ट्रीय नीतियों का महत्वपूर्ण हिस्सा है हम नालंदा अंतर्राष्ट्रीय विश्वविद्यालय द्वारा दी जाने वाली बिम्स्टेक स्कॉलरशिप योजना का विस्तार करने और उसका दायरा बढ़ाने की दिशा में काम कर रहे हम बंगाल की खाड़ी को केंद्र में रखते हुए मरीन साइंस पर ज्वाइंट रिसर्च को बढ़ावा देने का भी प्रयत्न कर रहे हैं कृषि क्षेत्र सभी बिम्स्टेक देशों की अर्थव्यवस्था का आधार है हमारे बीच वैल्यू एडेड कृषि प्रोडक्ट्स की रीजनल वैल्यू चेंज बनाने की अच्छी संभावनाएं हैं इसके लिए हमने भारत के एक संस्थान आर को व्यापक अध्ययन करने का कार्य दिया है द प्राइम मिनिस्टर एडेड दैट सिक्योरिटी प्लेज अ सिग्निफिकेंट रोल इन रीजनल प्रोस्पेरिटी एंड डेवलपमेंट एंड द साइनिंग ऑफ म्यूचुअल लीगल असिस्टेंस ट्रीटी ऑन क्रिमिनल मैटर्स विल हेल्प इन दैट डायरेक्शन सुरक्षा के बिना हमारे क्षेत्र की समृद्धि या विकास सुनिश्चित करना असंभव है काठमांडू में हमारी चौथी समिट में हमने आतंकवाद ट्रांसनेशनल क्राइम और नॉन ट्रेडिशनल थ्रेड्स के खिलाफ क्षेत्रीय कानूनी ढांचे को सुदृढ़ करने का निर्णय लिया था हमने अपनी लॉ एन्फोर्समेंट एजेंसी के बीच सहयोग बढ़ाने का भी फैसला किया था मुझे खुशी है कि हमारा कन्वेंशन टू कॉम्बेट टेरिज्म पिछले साल से सक्रिय हो गया है आज की समिट के दौरान हमारे बीच म्यूचुअल लीगल असिस्टेंस ट्रीटी ऑन क्रिमिनल मैटर्स पर भी हस्ताक्षर हो रहे हैं इसी तरह के अन्य इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स पर भी हमें तेजी से आगे बढ़ना चाहिए ताकि हमारी कानूनी व्यवस्थाओं के बीच बेहतर समन्वय बन सके आज हमारे डिप्लोमेटिक ट्रेनिंग इंस्टीट्यूट के बीच सहयोग के लिए एक समझौते पर हस्ताक्षर हो रहे हैं ऐसा ही एग्रीमेंट हम अपने लॉ एन्फोर्समेंट ट्रेनिंग इंस्टीट्यूट के बीच भी कर सकते हैं भारत की फॉरेंसिक साइंस यूनिवर्सिटी अपनी फील्ड में एक यूनिक वर्ल्ड क्लास संस्था है हम इसमें बिम्स्टेक देशों के पुलिस और फॉरेंसिक ऑफिसर्स के लिए कैपेसिटी बिल्डिंग की व्यवस्था भी कर सकते हैं कंक्लूडिंग हिज एड्रेस Prime Minister Modi called upon fellow leaders to strive to transform the Bay of Bengal into a bridge of connectivity, prosperity and security among the BIMSTEC member countries. Aaj jab hamara kshetra swasth aur economic security ki chunautiyon ka samna kar raha hai, hamare beech ekjutta aur sahyog samay ki maang hai. Aaj samay hai 
बे ऑफ बंगाल को ब्रिज ऑफ कनेक्टिविटी ब्रिज ऑफ प्रोस्पेरिटी ब्रिज ऑफ सिक्योरिटी बनाने का मैं आप सबका आह्वान करता हूं कि 1997 में जिन लक्ष्यों के लिए हमने साथ साथ चलने का निर्णय लिया था उनकी प्राप्ति के लिए हम एक नए जोश नई ऊर्जा के साथ फिर से अपने आप को समर्पित करें प्रधानमंत्री प्रयुत चांद ओझा बिम्स्टेक के अगले अध्यक्ष के रूप में मैं थाईलैंड का स्वागत करता हूं और शुभकामनाएं देता हूं आप सबका बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद Prime Minister Modi along with other leaders also witnessed the signing of three Bimstek agreements which represent progress being achieved in ongoing cooperation activities that is Bimstek Convention on Mutual Legal Assistance in Criminal Matters Bimstek Memorandum of Understanding on Mutual Cooperation in the Field of Diplomatic Training and Memorandum of Association on Establishment of Bimstek Technology Transfer Facility Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina of Bangladesh has called upon the Bimstek leaders to work towards finding common strategies to rebuild a sustainable and resilient Bay of Bengal region by tapping the full potential of the region addressing the fifth summit of the Bimstek virtually from the Dhaka Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina placed a three point proposal at the summit urging the leaders to make the process fully functional by activating all the 14 sectors of cooperation In her proposal, Sheikh Hasina called for the immediate operationalization of the Bimstek Free Trade Area (FTA), for which framework agreement was adopted in 2004, and other decisions like Bimstek centers and entities relating to disaster management, energy, cultural commission connectivity projects, energy grid connectivity, among others. This is All India Radio giving you the world news. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. External Affairs Minister Dr S Jayashankar held a meeting with Foreign Minister of Mexico Marcelo Ebrard Casabon in New Delhi Wednesday evening. They undertook a comprehensive review of bilateral relations and also discussed issues of mutual interest. Foreign Minister of Mexico had arrived in New Delhi last night. This is the first visit of Mr Marcelo Ebrard Casabon to India in his capacity as Foreign Minister. He will also visit Mumbai. Currently, Mexico is India's second largest trade partner in Latin America and is a member of the UNSC alongside India for the period 2021-22. Even as Imran Khan faces mounting pressure with some allies leaving the ruling coalition ahead of the no confidence vote, Pakistan Information Minister Fawad Chaudhry said Pakistan Prime Minister will not resign. Imran Khan is in a precarious position with voting on the no confidence motion expected on the 3rd of April. In the meantime, ruling Pakistan Tehreek-e-Insaf or PTI got another major shock when one of its key allies, Muttahida Qaumi Movement Pakistan (MQMP) has quit the ruling coalition and joined ranks with the opposition. Meanwhile, Pakistan People's Party (PPP) chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari has said that Imran Khan has now lost majority in the National Assembly and leader of the opposition Shahbaz Sharif will soon become the prime minister of the country. The Pakistani National Assembly has a total strength of 342 members with the majority mark being 172. PTI led coalition was formed with the support of 179 members, Imran Khan's PTI having 155 members and other major allies including Balochistan Awami Party and Grand Democratic Alliance have some 20 seats. Imran Khan's situation is precarious given that three of the four allies MQMP, PMLQ and BAP have stated their support for the opposition's no confidence motion and said that they will vote accordingly. The opposition parties in Pakistan are seen to have the support of 162 members of the house and are expected to be joined by the three ruling coalition parties during the vote, helping them cross the majority mark. The no confidence motion was tabled in the house on the 28th of March with the support of 161 members of the house. Russia has decided to cut down military operations near Ukrainian capital Kiev but said it is not a ceasefire. We have a report. Due to diplomatic negotiations between the two sides, Russia promised to scale back troops from Ukrainian capital Kiev and the northern part of the country. However, Russia has not said anything about areas witnessing heavy fighting including Mariupol, Sumy and Kharkiv in the east and Kherson and Mykolaiv in the south. 
Meanwhile, Ukraine negotiators have called for an international accord to guarantee Ukrainian security. Ukraine has promised to adopt a neutral status in a detailed potential settlement to the five-week conflict. Ukrainian negotiators have also called for a meeting between Russian President Putin and his Ukrainian counterpart Zelensky. Top Russian negotiator Vladimir Medinsky has said that it could take place when foreign ministers are prepared to initiate a peace agreement. Meanwhile, Turkey has said that Ukrainian and Russian delegations have decided to return home for consultations after making progress in the negotiations. Tuesday's talks, hosted by Turkey, sketched out what could end up being a framework for ending the war. The talks had been expected to resume on Wednesday, but Turkish Foreign Minister Mevlut Cavusoglu said the two sides were bringing the proposals back to their capitals. Russian Deputy Defense Minister Alexander Fomin said Moscow could cut back military activity in the direction of Kiev and Cherniv to increase mutual trust and create conditions for further negotiations. Russian delegation head Vladimir Medensky said negotiators would take Ukraine's proposal for Russian President Vladimir Putin, and then Moscow would provide a response. Niharika Bhuvania for World News, All India Radio. The chief of the UN refugee agency, Filippo Grande, on Wednesday said, as Russia's war on Ukraine is set to enter its sixth week, the number of refugees fleeing Ukraine has now crossed the four million mark. Taking to Twitter, the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, UNHCR, Filippo Grande wrote, he will discuss with the authorities, the UN and other partners, ways to increase support to people affected and displaced by this senseless war. According to the International Organization for Migration, the number of refugees fleeing Ukraine includes over 2 lakh third country nationals. The UN World Food Programme, UNWFP, has said that the crisis in Ukraine has created a catastrophe and will have a global impact. The Executive Director of UNWFP, David Beasley, at the UN Security Council on Tuesday stated that many of the Ukrainian farmers who produce a significant amount of the world's wheat are engaged in the conflict and as a result, the already high food prices are skyrocketing. He said the agency was feeding 125 million people around the world before the Russia-Ukraine crisis and now it has to start cutting the rations because of rising food, fuel and shipping costs. Ukraine and Russia produce about 30% of the world's wheat supply, 20% of corn and 75-80% to 80% of the sunflower oil. India on Wednesday carried out two successful test firings of the medium-range surface-to-air missile army weapon system from the integrated test range at Chandipur off the Odisha coast. The Defence Ministry said the weapon system has once again proved its effectiveness as two missiles during the flight test have achieved direct hits against high-speed aerial targets at the test range. The launches were carried out establishing the accuracy and reliability of the weapon system against targets cov- covering the sea skimming and high altitude functionality within the envelope. The ministry said performance of all weapon system components including missile, weapon system radar and command post have been validated during these trials. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh has complimented Defence Research and Development Organisation DRDO, the Indian Army and the industry for successful launches of the Army weapon system. He said the successful launches have once again proved the reliability of the system. Commerce and Industry Minister Piyush Goyal has invited the business community from the United Arab Emirates to capitalize the opportunities that the emerging India is offering to global businesses. Mr. Goyal was speaking at India's Honor Day celebrations at Expo 2020 in Dubai. He said New Delhi provides talent and investor-friendly policies and in most of the sectors, foreign direct investment is open 100%. He said India has several new initiatives to promote industry like the production-linked incentive scheme and the Make in India policy to provide ease of doing business. U.S. President Joe Biden has proposed Dean R. Thompson as the new ambassador to Nepal. Thompson will replace present U.S. envoy Randy Berry. Thompson currently serves as the State Department's Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary for the South and Central Asian Affairs and is the Acting Assistant Secretary from 2020 to 21. Prior to that, Thompson was the Deputy Chief of Mission of the U.S. Embassy in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Thompson also was the Consul General of the U.S. Consulate in Kolkata. 
In the IPL cricket, Kolkata Knight Riders have set a victory target of 129 runs for Royal Challengers Bangalore at D.Y. Patel Stadium in Mumbai. Put into bat, Kolkata were all out for 128 runs in 18.5 overs. In reply, Royal Challengers Bangalore were 101 for 4 in 15.5 overs when reports last came in. Australia defeated West Indies by 147 runs in the first semi-final of the Women's World Cup at Wellington, New Zealand to enter the finals. The match was reduced to 45 overs due to rain. West Indies won the toss and chose to field. Australia scored 305 for three wickets in 45 overs and West Indies were skittled out for 148 runs in 37 overs. And now let's take a look at the major developments around the world as reported in the foreign press. Let us take a look at the press reports on China. Nikkei Asia writes, China has fully militarized at least three of several islands it built on the South China Sea, a top U.S. military official says, and is giving its Coast Guard more firepower in what may be an attempt to take advantage of the world's preoccupation with the Ukraine war. ET reports India has agreed to develop three Sri Lankan wind farms on islets between the countries. Let us have some brief news from Afghanistan. Tolo News reports that the World Bank has suspended four projects in Afghanistan worth $600 million after the Taliban banned girls from returning to secondary schools. The project's aims including improving in education, health and agriculture. Pajwak headline read, Taliban government insists women employees work separately from women. DW headline reads, Afghanistan, Taliban restrict women's right as isolation looms. Now let's take a look at what made headlines in Nepal. Khamar Hub writes that Nepal Prime Minister Sheikh Bahadur Diyoba's visit to New Delhi will further solidify Nepal-India ties. The visit is scheduled for 1st of April. Annapurna Express writes that addressing the 5th BIMSTEC Summit, Prime Minister Sheikh Bahadur Diyoba said for a vibrant, forward-looking and integrated BIMSTEC region, we must promote Buddhism as a strong connecting thread. Now let's take a look at what made headlines in Bangladesh. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina has blamed a section of Bangladeshis for the United States sanctions on the Rapid Action Battalion, reports Daily Star. Bangladesh State Minister for Foreign Affairs, Shahriyar Alam, has called upon the civil society, think tanks, researchers, academicians of Bangladesh and India to play a constructive role in promoting the bilateral relations between Bangladesh and India, reports the Daily Sun. In Israel, at least five people were killed when a gunman opened fire in a crowded city in central Israel late on Tuesday. The University of Tokyo will temporarily accept students and researchers facing difficulty continuing their academic work in a safe environment due to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. A quick look at the headlines once again. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi addresses 5th BIMSTEC Summit virtually, calls for making Bay of Bengal the bridge of connectivity, prosperity and security. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jay Shankar holds meeting with Foreign Minister of Mexico Marcelo Ebrard Kosovo in New Delhi. Imran Khan led Pakistan government reduced to minority as key ally Mutahida Qaumi Movement Pakistan quits coalition. Russia decides to cut down military operations near Ukrainian capital Kiev but says it is not a ceasefire. UN World Food Program cautions crisis in Ukraine has created a catastrophe and will have a global impact. India test fires two medium-range surface-to-air missile army weapon system off the Odisha coast. And an IPL Kolkata Knight Rider set a victory target of 129 runs before Royal Challengers Bangalore at D.Y. Pato Stadium in Mumbai. And now, before we end, let us listen to Mahatma Gandhi's favorite bhajan, Vaishnav Jan, by artists from Cuba.
And with that, we end this bulletin. We'll be back at the same time tomorrow with the next edition of World News. Thank you.